spiritually bless you today and welcome to Jesus is Lord Fellowships Worldwide International. My name is Senior Patora Dr. Diana Brabon. Today's message through the grace of God before we get down to all the basics. Today's message is thank God for my scars. Thank God for my scars. Amen. I wanted to welcome all of the national, all of the international fellowship members and every visitor worldwide who has been coming online and receiving all of our messages, amen, all of our teachings, all of our, 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 our daily devotions, amen, all of the worldwide Bible studies that you could come online to receive your copy or get your email attachment get that Bible studies in and receive your certification and your GPA grades at the end of the at the end of the year. I'm pretty excited for each and every one of you. Amen. Especially who's been achieving this for the past few years. Amen. And um, through the grace of God, I'm really excited because this ministry, we have been sending out snail mail through the post office, through the grace of God, through many jails. Amen. We have been spreading the gospel throughout all of the daily devotions. We have been uh, sending various different kind of teachings, uh, letters of encouragement. Through the grace of God, we have been, um, wow, we have been making a difference in people's lives in various areas. Amen. And many people are coming closer to Christ due to the teachings. Amen. And we need to continue to spread the gospel of the Lord. Amen. This is what I encourage each and every one of you. You are the lighthouse of Christ. Jesus. Amen. Uh, today's sermon is spoken by your very own senior pastor, Dr. Diana Brevon. Amen. Um, I wanted to share with you before we start, anyone who would like to send in any donations, any any donations to this ministry, or also do you cannot get on your computer right now and you can't do the studies, you cannot send it in to me or Deacon Matthew, please have the honor to send it in to attention to Dr. Deanna Brevon, um, P.O. Box 2752. Inverness, Florida, 34451. Amen. We always look forward to receiving anything from you. Also, prayers have been answered. Amen. There's various prayers that the Lord is opening up doors with. And it has been coming to pass. It has been answered. Amen. And it will continue to because we are a praying ministry. We are a life-changing ministry. We are a going ministry. We are a growing ministry. We are a ministry that brings you the results. Amen. No matter where you are, we are a praying ministry that we care for you. Uh, you could give us a prayer request maybe two months ago, maybe one year ago. We're still going to continue to pray for you in that area. And then when you write back to us, it could be one year, it could be one month, it could be one day, to give us an update through the grace of God, we will update you. We will anoint your prayer warrior pages that we have. We have prayer journals that goes back in time. Amen. From the very beginning that you started with us, in the very beginning that you started to send us in prayer requests, we are here for you. And we love you. Amen. Continue to be the Lord's anointed one. Continue to prosper. Continue to go forward. No matter what ha, ha, grows before you in mountains. Don't give up. Continue to arise. Keep on going forward. As your pastora is doing every brand new day. And believe me. Since I've been starting to get up, to start moving, to move forward within ministry through the grace of God, there has been so much bumpy roads and so much everything to slow me down on my process of healing, health, wisdom, every area to slow your pastor down. But do I stop? No. It's when you stop, you become sinking sand. You don't give up. You continue to prosper in life. But along your journey, you remember your mistakes. You remember 
what brought you to where you are today and how you became who you are today. Amen. Stop looking back at your at your errors. Turn that errors over to the Lord Jesus Christ and be it no more. Amen. Just continue to focus and prosper and be a great help as your soul prospers. Today's sermon, amen, which I had already shared with you, amen, is, what is today's sermon, folks? Today's sermon is, thank God for my scars. Thank God for my scars. Scars, folks, are a reminder of something, and most of the time, a scar reminds us of something unpleasant. Amen. Scars are not unusual because there's many people who have scars all, all over their body. And for every scar they have, it indicates that something bad happened. Most of the scars we receive are from something bad. When you receive a particular scar or a mark on your body, it's there for a purpose. It's there for a reason. I often thought God could have made the flesh so that it could not scar when it's torn. Amen. For example, the tongue. Amen. The tongue has a certain type of tissue that does not even scar when it's torn. In fact, the tongue does not have a scar tissue. I don't care how many times that you have bit your tongue and hurt yourself. God has fixed it so that the tongue can virtually repair itself. Amen? It's, it's and when it does, it leaves no scars at all. However, the only, uh, the only scar that the tongue could possibly leave is when you use the tongue to speak against your brother or sister in Christ. It doesn't leave a physical scar, but it still leaves a scar. Almost every one of us have some sort of physical scars on our bodies. From sports wounds, from surgical cuts, from war wounds, or even accidents. <coughs> Amen? But what about your emotional scars? What about your emotional scars? Amen? All scars, they're not physical, folks. All scars are not physical. It's easy to see physical scars and wounds that you can see even if, if they're old or brand new. Amen? Or whether the wounds needed to be stitched by a doctor or or whether the use of a brand uh, or, or the use of a band-aid would be enough for you amen but emotional wounds emotional wounds and scars they're not really easy to detect some emotional scars and wounds are in a desperate need of treatment but have been ignored for so many years. Ignoring these types of scars and wounds, they may result in serious psychological damages. It's important, folks, not only to recognize when you have emotional wounds, but also know what is needed to heal it. it and it has become obvious that we're being still being damaged. Amen? It's obvious when we're still being damaged within us long after that event even occurred. All, all because of scars are like that. They are reminders of something very unpleasant. They're reminders of hurt. The reminders of pain. They are reminders of our trials and our tribulations. And sometimes 
They're even reminders of some sin in our lives. And then scars reminds us that sin is very painful. Ask any doctor. And he or she, they will tell you that a scar does not always appear at the very moment of that event and that it caused by the scar. Sometimes it takes a while for the scar to make its appearance. And when it comes to sin, it doesn't even always scar at the time of the sin. Sometimes it doesn't, it, it does. But not always, folks, not always. In fact, some people, they bear so much physical scars. Scars that you can see that were a direct result of sin. Just like a gang member who loved to, to show off his bullet wounds and the cuts from a knife fight. Amen. Or maybe one of those teardrops that they have under their eyes. Amen. Because to his ways of thinking, it was documented proof that he is sure enough a gangster. And amen. Worthy of membership in somebody's game. Huh. Physically, there are always to cover up or hide our scars, folks. You can even apply concealing makeup for that example. Amen? You can even apply concealing makeup. And there's various makeups available in the marketplace today that can even temporarily hide a scar. Amen? And there's even a product on the market that promises to rid you of both old and brand new scars. If you're really serious about this, folks, there's cosmetic seri uh, surgery, amen, that offers even a more permanent solution for you. However, sin always leaves its scars in our lives. Sin always leaves the scars in our lives. And all of our sins are known unto the Lord our God. And sometimes may become known to many others. The scars of sin, it remains for life. And the only way to prevent that scars, the only way to prevent the scars, folks, is to prevent the sin. Amen? Is to prevent the sin. There's no other makeup available. There's no makeup available for this. Nor is there any cosmetic surgery for this. And when it comes to scars of sin, Jesus Christ is your only answer. He's that covereth. His sin shall not prosper. But whosoever confesses and forsakes it shall have mercy. But consequences always remains. In other words, he is merciful. But he will also leave you a reminder of your sin, folks. Scars, physical scars on the outside, they are one thing. But the scars, both emotional and the scars spiritual on the inside of us are something else, folks. They are really something else. In fact, the inward scars, they're much more serious. These inward scars, they usually don't even come until much later in life. The inward scars, they may not even affect us, but can affect those that we love. And gives us more reason to seek God's help. Amen. There's some things that, that we would love to forget. Amen. But scars, it will be there forever. Amen. Serving as a constant reminder to us. Amen. As painful as they may as they may be, these inwardly and outwardly, they actually do serve a very important purpose in one's life. Scars remind us not to make that same mistake again. That's what scars remind us to do. Amen. 
And let me tell you something. I went through, I went through brain cancer. And through the grace of God, there are many things the Lord brought back to me. And there's more, a lot that the Lord has taken away from me, from my mind. And I praise God for everything bad that he's taken away from me. And when I try to remember something of the past, and if it gives me chronic headaches or chronic pain, I will not go there. I will just turn it over to the Lord and continue to succeed for life for today. Amen. And I will not ask family. I will not ask anyone any questions about that time or season. Or I will stay silent about it and let it go. I'll just turn it over to the Lord. Amen. Because what the Lord set free is free indeed. Amen. What he let it go, it is gone. Amen. And nothing, no weapon can bring that back. Amen. Nothing. Nothing can bring none of that stuff back. Amen. Scars remind us not to make that same mistake again. Amen. Scars remind us not to make that same mistake again. You've heard it and 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 said that that we learn by our, our own mistakes. In other words, in other words, it's so bad to make a mistake as long as we don't them over and over and over again. And God uses our failures to make us stronger. Theodore Roosevelt, Theodore Roosevelt, he once said, the only man who never makes a mistake is the man who never does anything. Edison, he spent more than $100,000 to obtain 6,000 different fiber specimens. Amen. And the only three of them proved satisfactory. Each failure, folks, brought him that much closer to the solution to his problem. His friend, Henry Ford, it was right when he said that failure was the opportunity to begin again more intelligently for sure and the mistakes that we make in life they are like scars they are like scars amen they are reminders to not tread down that particular road again and we should never keep looking at our scars physically emotionally or even spiritually as something ugly and unsightingly and decide that it's too late amen because the psalmist said in Psalms 37 24 though he falls he shall not be cast headlong for the Lord upholds his hand we need to let our scars remind us that the mistakes that we make are worth learning from. Yes, the Lord will leave us reminders of the ways and manners that we received our scars. And yes, at the times these are physical, actual scars. At the times these are physical, actual scars. Amen. Through the grace of God. Through the grace of God. Through the grace of God, yes. Folks, at times, these are physical. These are actual scars where the skin was so torn. Even, it allows us. He even allows us, folks, to observe that healing process by letting that scar tissue to form. Amen. Think about it, folks. Just think about this for a moment. Amen. Let's think about this for a moment. He didn't even have to, to, to do it this way. Amen. He didn't even have to do it this way. Amen. He could have made it such that only once the skin is torn, that it would never even heals and automatically becomes infected. Any good medical doctor will tell you that infected wound is serious. Any breaks in the skin 
lets in in dangerous bacteria and infections, orgasms, organisms, and and set in organisms that sent in. Amen. But God, but God gives us a physical healing process. Amen. He gives us that physical healing process that we can even see for ourselves. Amen. And he also gives us an emotional and spiritual healing process to assist us with the scars of life. Amen. I know that the scars of life, they're so different to deal with. Know that we try to move on. And sometimes those same scars, they seem to hinder us in trusting and loving ourselves. Even worse, trusting in God. We tense up and we become fearful of allowing ourselves to love and to be loved again. But sometimes those scars, they assist us and helps us. Well, they remind us to stop and to think about what we again, amen, what <laughs> to love and to be loved again. But sometimes those scars, they help us for they remind us to stop and to think about what we're doing, amen, to not make that same mistake again and again and again. But if we view it, in the way that Paul here in that text viewed it, we will come to that conclusion that God will not ask to look over your, 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 your resume. Amen. He will not ask you what kind of experience do you have. He will not ask you about the church attendance. And who is the minister or how popular he is. He will not look you over for the medals and degrees or diplomas. But he will look for your scars, folks. He will look for your scars. Amen. Scars that reminds us of our purpose in life. Here's how I believe Paul viewed his scars. Amen. He knew that Christ suffered for him. And therefore, Paul was willing to suffer for Christ. And suffer he did. He bore as much as any man or any woman had to bear for Christ. In 2 Corinthians 11, 24 to 25, we read here, Of the Jews, five times received I. 40 stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered a shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. Can you imagine, folks, how ugly those scars on poles must have looked after all this? Can you only imagine? However, despite this physical appearance, these scars, they served a purpose. His scars, they preached a powerful message, a powerful sermon. His scars, they told a story that no one could even deny. His scars, they represented the fact that all things work for the good to those who love the Lord. Isn't it amazing, folks, that only God would choose to turn the ugly marks of our trials and tribulations into a badge of honor? There's many be a trial in your life today. And you just don't even understand why the fire and the flame. Just remember Job, folks. Remember Job? He didn't even understand this either. And he lost more than any man or any woman upon this earth will ever lose. 
Amen? But his endurance, despite the wrong counsel of, sister, of, of, of Brother Job, <coughs> amen, of Brother Job, and despite the ill advice that passed out by his so-called friends, Amen? Amen and amen. Wow, oh, that computer made an error when I went to um, when I went to correct through the grace of God my um, my writings. Despite of the devil releasing his wounds folks to buffet and batter Job folks at every turn Job endured he endured the scars of Paul's body. Amen. Were branding marks of Christ Jesus. Did you hear me, folks? Despite of that devil's releasing his hounds to buffet and to batter Job's life at every turn, Job endured the scars of Paul's body. And were branding marks of Jesus Christ. Amen. Of all of those scourging marks. Just like cattle. There was a, a, a time that slaves were branded on their flesh, folks. In order to show ownership. Amen. And their bodies, they bore scars to identify just who their master was. And so here's the point here. Paul had subjected his body so much and suffered so much persecution in the name of Jesus Christ until his body was scarred up by the opposition. But yet he still stood. And yet he still proclaimed to the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Along the way, there were people who challenged Paul's credentials. Mind you, there are people today who will try and do the very same thing to you. I ran into to this sister one day, who I had not, who I had not seen in a few years. And instead of saying hello to her, her first question to me was, Are you still preaching the gospel? Are you still preaching the gospel? Are you still singing praises to our Savior? Are you still instructing the living word of God? And my response to her was, Are people still sinning? She did not even answer me when I, when I asked her that answer. When I shared with her that answer, she just looked at me for a moment as she went on her merrily way. However, although I'm not sensitive, I believe that she was trying to say that after receiving my scars, I should have given up by now. I should have given up by now. After receiving all of my scars of sickness, of battles with all of the battles that has to do huh, who, with every sickness and disease that I faced, with every surgery I faced, with every, wow, bone disease that I faced, with every surgeries that I faced, through the grace of God. That's what I, I, I felt that she thought she meant was, she thought I'd given up. But everybody who knows me this woman of God will continue to spread the gospel until my last breath because I don't understand that word and I don't know that word. Give up. That's my first encouragement to everyone. When you fall, you arise and you continue to keep on going forward. Amen. You don't give up. No matter how long it takes for you to get back on board and get back on track and keep on going forward. No matter how long it takes you arise and you roll and you do everything possible with the Lord before you leading you. You don't give up. Amen. I will surely enough never give up on him. That sister 
kind of reminded me of Job's wife. That sister in the Lord reminded me of Job's wife that very moment who suggested that Job should simply curse God and simply die. And my response is the very same to her. You speak as one of the foolish women that speaks. That speaks. What? Shall we receive good at the hands of God? Should we receive good at the hands of God and shall we not receive evil the minute that I received my very first scar folks should I have taken my ball and just go home no I know that there are, are, are people out there who wants you to just shut up they just want you to end they don't want you to succeed. Amen. They want that Jeremiah to shut up. And be still. But Jeremiah said. That he did place the, the thoughts into consideration. But concluded that he couldn't do that. Because the word of God was like fire. All shut up in his bones. Hallelujah. He couldn't help but to speak for the Lord our God. Just as your senior pastora, Dr. Diana Bravon. Amen. This is symbolic of those who bears the scars of Jesus Christ. We have the can't help it. It's, it's no matter what Satan tries to throw our way. We have those, I can't help it. No matter what Satan flies our way. God has been so good that we just can't help it. And we're willing to bear the scars, folks. <coughs> we are willing to bear the scars. Just like the, the gang member that I mentioned earlier. Amen. We don't mind displaying our scars. Just like a badge of honor. Amen. Why? Because they are a badge of honor. Our scars are documented. Proof that we are indeed worthy of being called a child of God, folks. <coughs> Excuse me. Go ahead. Go ahead, folks. Just look at the lines. Look at the marks of your journey that you are leading yourself into with Christ. Every brand new day, look at your journey with Christ. Amen. The common wisdom calls them ugly reminders. In the light of God's purpose, they are beautiful trophies folks they're beautiful trophies god has a purpose and a plan for your scars folks and you he has a purpose for your scars and for you and the bible says that god knits us together he knits us together in our mother's wombs that means folks what does that mean that means that God made my heart with holes in it. And then he knitted us together in our mother's womb. And that means that God made my heart with holes in it. It also means, you know what it also means? And then that God chose for me to be born in a time when, when medical technology Woo, hallelujah, had developed, had developed. I was speaking with somebody else yesterday about this, about how amazing this technology is, especially today about what the mothers, they see in reference for their brand new coming child. You could even see the format of the baby and how she shaped it, how the baby is groaning. Amen. 
You could see every portion of the image in today's. What we could not see in the past. Amen. But through the grace of God, it also means that God, he chose for me to be born in a time when medical technology had developed and in a place where it was available to fix my heart. You know, that times when I went through the strokes. Oof. Um, this past few weeks, as many of you know, I'm preparing for that next level of what the Lord's work has in store for us. Amen. And through the grace of God, I've been preparing my health. Amen. And every open door that the Lord has been providing and doing. And this past few weeks, woof, I tell you, a weapons of warfare just kept on flying at me. I was doing exercise this one day, and the respiratory just got knocked out of me. But the way how the respiratory got knocked out of your pastora was with pain in my chest. I had pain in my chest, and through the grace of God, um, I had pain breathing and pain when I talked. You know, and I was there currently in a class in exercise where I go for my six days a week therapy. Amen. At the Y, at the citrus, you know, at the at the Y that is affiliated with the with the hospital amen through the grace of god and um as i am there present through the grace of god i faced those storms of attacks that i faced in my life and when i did um face it they came and they got me the oxygen and everything for that day and they tended to me they took very good care of me for that whole that whole period but then I became shut in for that time. And guess what it was? It was not another stroke that was arriving. Praise God, because I, your pastor went through two. What it was, was respiratory. It was due to the, to the heat. It was due to humidity. And it was due to air that I go into every single day. Amen. And it was due to the respiratory. So back again to to four times a day with the respiratory machine of the, how do you call it, asthma machine and, and the other doohickeys that the, that the Lord supplies us with temporary here in order for assistance with his word. Because this pastora, I eat the word of God every two to four hours in order for health and healing. Amen. I pray the living promises every two to four hours. It depends how the, the, the day is going. Amen. But, um, but through the grace of God, besides the, my heart, okay, had the holes in it, it also means that God, He chose me to be born in a time when, when medical technology had developed. What are you talking about, Pastora? Where did we leave off, Pastora? What are you talking about, Pastora? Okay, the Bible says that God knits together all of, uh, you know, in our mother's wombs. Amen? That means that God made my heart. Amen? God made my heart with holes in it. <laughs> It also means that God chose for me, for me to be born in a time when, when all of this amazing that I was just sharing with you, this amazing technology has developed and in a place where it was available to fix my heart, to fix my body from the very crown of my head to the very soles of my feet during this season. And he decided that I would be born to parents who would fix me. Amen. Who would fix me? Who would be there for me? Who is my Father God? Who is the Lord, my healer, my strength, and my comforter? Not abandon me to die from any condition that I face. Amen. You see what I mean? Folks, when I say I have scars to remind me, Every single day of every battlefield that I have faced within health, within healing. Amen. 
amen and amen and amen. I have scars through the grace of God of just how much God loves me. Do you have scars? Do you have emotional or psychological scars because of a circumstance or due to a situation that you faced? Jesus had some scars, folks. When Jesus rose from the grave and Tomas needed proof, he needed to see the scars of Jesus. Amen. Hands and, and, and Jesus' side. And these scars, they became part of the fabric of evidence to prove that the resurrection was not a rumor or a figment of his imagination that brought about by grief and denial. Amen. The resurrection was real folks to Tomas that's what the scars of Jesus meant amen the resurrection is real and because the resurrection was real it was documented proof that when we suffer with him we have victory through Jesus Christ and if you have any scars praise God for those scars that you have why? Because he's given you a means to show that the world, how he takes care of us, how he heals us through any means that he chooses. Amen? Yes, folks. We may have been hurt at one time or another. Amen? And people may have criticized us and have spoken evil against us. Even people who belongs to our fellowship worldwide, amen? Our fellowship family, no matter where we are. Through the years that we have developed scars, it's because of it. Amen? And yes, some scars are, are some results of sinful choices that we've made. But remember, folks, remember, when God forgives sin, he forgives it all. And the scars that remains are not to remind us of our failures. But of God's victory over sin. Of his grace and mercy towards us. Amen. Towards us. And of his provision in our lives. And remember this too folks. Before the closing of this sermon. Teaching here today with you. Remember this folks. Amen. I want you to I, I, I want you to remember this. God does not give us scars to remind us that we have been hurt. God gives us scars to remind us that we have been healed. We have been healed and we've been delivered and we've been set free. And although Paul <coughs> endured attacks upon his ministry, he reminded those who were involved at the Galatians church. His scars showed that belonged to Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God for scars, folks. Praise him. They may look ugly to some people, but to me, they are very beautiful, folks. They are the most beautiful in the world scars. Amen. My name is Senior Pastora, Dr. Diana Brevon of Jesus is Lord Fellowship Worldwide International. I wanted to remind you, we have Bible studies from January to December every year. This year we have been really deep inside the book of Luke. Amen. Really deep inside the book of Luke. And it has been an amazing year in the book of Luke. Amen. I encourage each and every one of you. To, to look into our Bible studies. We post them. We post them every Monday. At, we post them every Monday evening our time. Amen. And, uh, and through the grace of God. There are many of you in different levels. But through the grace of God. You are learning a lot. You are enduring a lot. And you are sending them in. Amen. You are sending them in. And at the end of the year. 
to the beginning of the year, you receive your certifications in the snail mail, right there in your postal mail. You receive your certification for a good and faithful job well done. And you also receive your grades throughout the year that you have endured. Amen. I look forward for this year. I really do because there's various of you that worked very hard. Amen. Including those of you who sends in your studies. Amen. At a portion at a time. Amen. And I wanted to say I love you all. Please send in uh, your prayer requests, your updated prayer requests. Send in to us your celebration of praise so that we could celebrate with you. Amen. Please send in also any letters of encouragement. If you are an encourager and you enjoy to write encouragement, please send them in because we do use them. We file them and we use them. We send them to, to jails. We send them to hospitals. Amen. We send them to, to everywhere, whoever needs that to be built up in encouragement. Amen. Um, also.